Genting Malaysia's chairman and CEO Tan Sri Lim Kok Teh has reportedly volunteered to take a 20% pay cut in view of the heavy gaming tax weighing down earnings. According to Sinchu Daily, the announcement was made at the group's AGM that was held today. Although some shareholders had cheered and applauded the decision, other minority shareholders felt that the cut should have been 50%. Lim was the best-paid CEO in 2018. He took home 183 million ringgit, up from 168 million ringgit in FY 2017. It is interesting to note that while his compensation rose by 9%, Gunting's net profit fell 5.5% from FY 2017. Meanwhile, total returns to Gunting shareholders fell 32%. The government has raised casino duties to 35% from 25% and also upped the annual casino license renewal fees by 30 million ringgit to 150 million ringgit. Dagang Next Change has confirmed talks to sell its 30% stake in Associate Ping Petroleum. Dinex says it is confident that it could fetch attractive valuations for the investment given the current stronger crude oil prices compared with the time when it bought the stake. Executive Director Zainal Abidin Abdul Jalil says the group has been actively looking to monetize its investment. While Zainal did not reveal the price, as a guide, he says it would be higher than Dnex's initial investment of 10 million USD and higher than its current book value of about 200 million ringgit. Zainal also highlighted that Ping's reserves and volume are currently high, while costs are down and the company is cash flow positive. However, Zainal warns that downside risk to crude prices still remains. More than 10 parties have expressed an interest in setting up digital banks in Malaysia as the country looks to launch its digital banking framework by year-end. Bank Negara's Financial Development and Innovation Department Director Suhaimi Ali says the companies comprise the mix of newcomers and financial players, Bernama reports. Currently, the framework is 50% ready and its main purpose, he says, is to protect the system and serve the underserved segments such as startups and micro-enterprises. Suhaimi adds that digital banks have the potential to bring tech efficiency and cater to the segments that require a different type of funding ecosystem. Currently, there are 240 fintech companies in Malaysia with 40% in the payment system industry and 48 e-wallet providers. MSM Malaysia Holdings warns that it will resort to taking commercial approaches that may not be beneficial to Malaysia should the group's financial performance continue to be impacted by sugar importers. Group chairman Dr. Wira Asar Abdul Hamid says that the two local sugar players have constantly engaged with the government to express concerns and for their views on approved permits to be taken into consideration. He says top of the list of appeals is for any decision made by the government for the sugar industry be made on an equitable basis. Azhar explains that the APs issued by the government expose local refiners further to the global sugar glut and excess supplies from countries like Thailand. Former 1MDB subsidiary SRC International still owes Coop 4.15 billion ringgit after borrowing 4 billion ringgit in 2011 and 2012. The debt exceeds the principal because it includes interest owed as of May 2019. SRC was supposed to pay back the whole amount by 2022. Witness Afida Aswa Abdul Aziz, who is the MOF's Strategic Investment Division Deputy Secretary, told the court that SRC had been defaulting its loan payments in 2015, 2016 and 2017. It even had to obtain a loan from the government to prevent an event of default. She testified that SRC had outstanding payments in as early as August 2015, with Coop sending letters to the company demanding it make payment or risk triggering the event.